Right, it makes sense that all these monster mags are hitting, you know, especially now in this month. But geez, man, I gotta buy food and beer and stuff like that, pay for gas, you know, and Biden's America. So, Castle Frankenstein, it's, uh, you know, it comes out. I thought this was also quarterly. It's biannual. It comes out twice a year. So, uh, you know, it helps the that helps the wild. The black cat is one of the, is the, one of the main features are here. Like I keep saying, this film. I've watched it about three or four times now. This is probably the best uh, universal horror film in terms of like quality, in terms of just... Uh, this is definitely one of their top films that they made. And I don't even think they realized it, right? The whole thing was they were bringing Lugosi and Karloff together. And the film is 90 years old. Amazing. So once again, okay, we'll go. We'll cover this. We'll, you know, we'll go through some of it. Uh, once again, I, this dude, man. Bang of our neck. This guy's awesome. This guy goes... I mean, he won't just go over an obscure film. He'll find, like, a student film that's found its way on YouTube, you know, from the 70s or something. He'll find, like, a trailer of something where the film is lost. He'll find the most obscure things that I've never heard of. Man. That's really important. That's what you... I mean, how many times are you going to see the same old... You know, uh, uh, Hammer film or, or what have you uh, re review. This guy's reviewing stuff that I've never heard of, right? Found on YouTube, right? And he also, most for the most part, he'll mention where you can watch these films. And usually, like I said, between YouTube and Tubi, uh, don't tell, don't say about, don't say anything about Bishop. <laughs> uh, you'll find things. So there's the Beast from the Beginning of Time, right? Apparently, this is a brain. There's a TV station in Kansas. Decided to make a film and hire locals and station employees to play the role. <laughs> and there's some kind of like, you know, caveman, a creature that's resurrected or something. I mean, you know. And some of the other films. I Daughters of Satan. I think I remember that. Yeah, Tom Selleck was in uh, Chainsaw Sally. Never never heard of it. It looks like the, pe it looks like the people today. Right? Fire Mains from Outer Space. Now, you remember this film, uh, Mystery Science Theater. But uh, yeah, I, I'd, I'd rather watch it without those little schmucks. Oh. Of course, Monster Go Go. Okay, you know what? Maybe, maybe they, maybe those little schmucks had those little robots assholes. Maybe they had a point with this one. Like, all right, for example, here, Love Goddesses of Blood Island. Right? Someone found a forty-seven minute version of it. Right? It has been removed, but you can still see clips via sixteen-minute video review. So somebody put this already uh, partly missing film on, and then it was taken down. That's great. Apparently, very, very gory. Yeah, and uh, it was this oh, monster in the closet. I, I vaguely remember this. It's a trauma film. Um, uh, I, I, you know, it's like it's, it's they're coming out all right. They're coming. They're coming. Don't worry. <laughs> um, okay, did, remember this movie? Remember this movie? They used to show this on USA Up All Night. A Polish vampire in Burbank. Uh, what's the guy's name? The the guy who made the film, right? Mark Pirro, right? This okay. This film, this film was shot on Super Eight. Okay, this guy, right? I think he was like a tour guide for Universal Studios. Uh, he he made his own movie on Super Eight and somehow managed uh, to sell it. And it was in it was like I said, it was shot on USA Ball uh, USA Ball Night with freaking you know Ron Sheer and Gilbert Gottfried. And they showed this film, and it's actually it's actually a good film. It's actually a funny. Kind of film, right? With the uh, uh, the guy, the original guy. Remember that guy, Eddie Deason? Remember they fired him and then he quit. And he's like, "What kind of low rent thing is this?" So he had to end up playing like you know another role in it. It was just kind of it was. Just, it's actually a funny movie, man. So and it's on Tubi. Yeah, I I recommend this movie, man. They used to show this on freaking cable all the time. And they used to show this on USA Up All Night all the time, too. Sorority Babes and the Slime Bowl, Bowl Rama, man. You got all the friggin' Leanna, Leanna Quigley's in this. A bunch of these, a bunch of these, uh, yeah, uh, a bunch of these women that I remember, man. Yeah, this all the time this was on friggin' USA Up All Night. I miss those days. Uh, although, uh, you know, like, when, they finally, when they finally came to Brooklyn... So, like I said, the guy does what he's supposed to do. He goes over the obscure stuff. Shows you how to see it. Like this. Zorgon, the H-bomb beast from hell. Right? So, this is a, a, literally a, uh, a college film uh, starring Rick Baker, right? Of course, you know, as the mo he designed the monster. He was the, and he was the monster in this. Um, very interesting. Like, finding this kind of stuff. So, 
We'll go here for a burial and let buried alive. Right? The idea of premature burial. And I like too when I was reading this how they mentioned that in the ancient world there was something done as a horrific punishment. You know, and of course later, you know, premature bur uh, burial is burying someone, you know, thinking someone's dead. Now this is, I mean, uh, there was a book I had, I lost it. It was such a hard book to read. It was about the, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> they used to have this thing here. Where you ring the bell if you're still alive. Uh, yeah, hyst I like this. Hysteria may be too strong a word, but the fear spread to France, right? Obviously, uh... You know, yeah, they say one in three people was buried alive. All right, relax, man. Uh, stand me so right. I like that fear spread to France, less so to Italy. Yeah, come on, man. Hey, what are you crazy? Britain, of course, in America. Right? So, this is other George Washington was worried about that. Interesting. So, of course, the literature you have, all the stuff for here. That book, man, oof, 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 that book it gave me chills, man. Of course, when you think of that, you think of Poe wrote a bunch of stories with that, you know. Uh, of course, the House of Usher, there's a whole thing in there. And, you, know, one, you know, one of the greatest scenes in a horror film, right? The Grave Robber when they when they revive Lawrence Talbot. You know, but, like, you know, just like you know, going through the, the thing, oh, remember this, right? The Pit and the Pendulum. And it's funny, too, obviously, you know, Tales of Terror, right? The, uh, the Black Cat, right? Casca Montiato. I still, I lost my Vincent Price when he did on the early video. He did like um, basically one man plays of Poe stories or four of them. I think it was an evening with Edgar Allan Poe. Can't find the damn thing. What a great, I gotta get my hands on it. Man. What a great job he did. It's essentially one man uh, acting these things. But yeah, the pit and the pendulum, Barbara Steele. Remember she, it was interesting about this is they don't really emphasize how evil this woman was what she did the plot she did to try to drive to her husband insane and boy does it backfire on her remember the last shot yeah bitch <laughs> but anyway so let me talk about some of the tv shows that had a real thriller man i've never seen thriller they, they have them on youtube so and of course uh comedy of terrors man yo dude what a friggin movie <laughs> Uh, was it uh, David Niven? He keeps waking up. What is this? Like he's, he has catalepsy. He's waking up in the coffin, you know. And they're trying to like these guys are trying to like like lock him in. <laughs> oh man, what a great movie that was! So now we're just going through here. I don't. This, I don't want to go over everything. I want you to buy this. Of course, the Incredible Shrinking Man. What a mind f movie. Of course, who wrote it? Right. Once again. This dude, man, I cannot emphasize how, how much, you know, Richard Matheson, he wrote, I mean, I didn't realize how many of these Twilight Zones that he wrote, I didn't even know that, but I mean, all the things you think about him writing, the stories, I didn't realize he did, like, like this one, yeah, the one with the robot, right, the, uh, the fight, the, the guy, the ex, Lee Marvin fighting the robot, uh, so, the legend of Hell House, uh, welcome to my house. I hope you find your stay here most illuminating. Anyway, it's a fucking... Um, anyway, that incredible shrinking man. I remember as a kid, too. I remember, like, the ending of it was, like, crazy. Because he sort of goes into, like... He goes to, like, another level of existence. And I've seen with the spider where he, where he fucking kills it with the, um... The, uh, the thread, man. Anyway... All right, so the black cat here. We got the, the... Right, the architecture of evil. This film, the set design... The match shot, the the Art Deco, you know, or the Bauhaus. I can't. I always get confused which one. You think I would know? So I think it's more Art Deco because it looks cool. Whereas the Bauhaus looks like, you know, a fucking checkerboard uh, the design on your on your, you know. The, I'm not a fan of the Bauhaus. Leave it at that. So Cabossier is a different story. But anyway, of course, uh, right. I like the idea that I keep mentioning, right. Black Hat embraces and adopts it as an important thematic element right, of the First World War, the Great War, the World War, as it's called in America. The influence that that war to end war had on society in general, the filmmaking in particular, cannot be underestimated, especially when it comes to horror pictures. Right, the whole thing of the um, the Monster Show by David J. Scott emphasized the war, always the war. In this case, you know, the first one. And like I said, in the film, you have these two actors. Now, Karloff is, is the top billing. I think uh, my man already was out, out on, um, 
uh, he was doing all the other films because Universal didn't didn't like him. But man, in this film, dude, what? You know, these men has to have a grudge. Jesus Christ! They're, they're, talk about disturbing for the time. They have a grudge uh, to film, and you see, you get shots like this, very expressionist, very you know. They say Bauhaus. I don't. Know, maybe it is Bauhaus. I don't know. To me, that looks more deco, right? But um. Like all the people, of course, everybody's from Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, they're talented, though. Very guys, they got to everybody. The, um, it was not. It's very, like I said, very, very, very loosely based on Paul. You know, yeah. It's just the, the whole film is really. I mean, it's really it's amazing. Remember the cops? Remember the beside the area? Look at this with the freaking feathers. Uh, and the big brute dude, but it's just it's it's a great film. It's a great film. Talk about the violence at the end is really you know interesting. Of course, the the whole issue here is that in the right right the goals he had already declared bankruptcy in thirty two. Yeah, you know? so they called him back on a three film contract. The film remember they made after this the Raven man. The Raven was a good movie too. So the Raven was pretty good. Now here's the the, the if you want to talk about money right in terms of Paris right right Karloff received the flat. Seven thousand five hundred dollars, and Lugosi uh, got three thousand. Interesting, and uh, what is it? The director got nine hundred. Interesting how they did that. You, know, you gotta save your money. Uh, uh, and also, yeah, it was based on the Verdun. If you look at that, you know, I, I can't, I'm wondering sometimes about the Battle of Verdun. You know, that book, the myth of the. Uh, you know, World War One. That book. Where they're talking about the. I, I think the Germans did a lot better than everybody thought in the uh, beginning, in those big fortresses. But yeah, I remember too. It was cut. There's a black mass scene in this, and of course in England this was a no no. So they they kind of brought that out. And what interesting, the Black Cat was their highest grossing picture of the year. Interesting, interesting. Anyway, I'm gonna go over like everybody loves our teenage cavemen women, of course. You know, the, the original, man, uh, what is it, one, 1 million years B.C., the original was freaking really good, and the remake was really good. Yeah, Victor Mature. No, oh, that's all. That's like the later uh, Bowery boys. Uh, you know, listen, I know the Lost World. I remember this film. I know this film is cheesy in terms of the special effects. A lot of it's like just like the giant... You know, the reptiles fighting each other, but they filmed them like they were big. But I still always loved this movie, man, when they would show it. Um, oh, really, uh, prehistoric women, remember this one? The, the wimpiest hero i ever seen in one of these films. Martin Beswick. And, the, yo, the, the, when dinosaurs rule the earth, and the other one, what is it? The, uh, the, the creatures that well have forgot. Man, those were nasty. Those are pretty violent movies, man. It scared the hell out of me. So I remember the scene where, where those, those where that one tribe blinds the dudes. Ooh, that was rough, man. So, like at the Earth core, like a guy doesn't understand. A fun romp, right? Peter Cushing is the comic relief at the Earth core. All right, you know, you know the deal. You know the deal. Hey, oh, the sexism is too much for me. You know the deal. It's gonna be part two. <laughs>